This video is going to take a look at how we can conduct a statistical test for a mean when sigma, the population standard deviation, is known. The process of a statistical test is called hypothesis testing. And the hypothesis testing is a scientific method with clear steps to go through to test a claim about some parameter. There's going to be a null hypothesis, which always has an equality in it. An example might be the average mu is equal to 53, or the population proportion p is equal to 0.45, or the population standard deviation sigma equals 2.1. The null hypothesis will always have equals in it. And we'll always assume that null hypothesis is true until we prove it false in favor of an alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is what we're trying to show. So for example, if we claim the null hypothesis is mu equals 53, the alternative might be we're trying to prove it's less than 53. Or if the null was that the proportion p equals 0.45, the alternative, we're trying to prove that it's not equal to 0.45. It might be lower or higher, but we're just trying to prove it's not 0.45. Or if we had our claim of sigma at 2.1, we might be trying to prove that it's actually greater than 2.1. So you've got your null hypothesis with equality. We assume that's true as we try and prove the alternate hypothesis, which is where you have your inequality. Now, based on the direction of the alternate hypothesis, we'll end up with a graph going one direction or another. We always are going to shade where the alternate hypothesis falls. So if our alternate is that mu is greater, we're going to end up shading a right tail, trying to show that mu is greater than the claimed mean, where the alternate hypothesis is more probable. Now, if the alternate hypothesis is less, we're going to be shading less or the left tail, showing where the alternate hypothesis is more probable in the left tail. Now, if the statement just says that mu is not equal to a value, we don't care if it's bigger than or smaller than our given value. We end up with a double shaded area, both bigger and smaller, where the alternative is more probable on either the left side or the right side. And that'll help us determine the picture we're going to draw as we calculate the values and the probability we fall in those tails. Speaking of which, we're going to have two important values we're going to look at, alpha and what's called the p-value. Alpha is given to us in the problem. It is the smallest probability where we would still believe the null hypothesis is true. Usually alpha is 0.05 or 0.01. And as long as we have at least 5% or 1% probability, depending on the problem, that the null hypothesis is true, we're going to believe that. We'll calculate the p-value, which is the actual probability the null hypothesis is true. And if that p-value is too small, smaller than alpha, we'll reject the null hypothesis. But if the p-value is bigger than the alpha, there's too much probability in favor of the null hypothesis. We have to fail to reject that null hypothesis. Now, here's kind of a silly example, but it actually works quite well with uh, setting up a hypothesis test. And the US judicial system is very similar to a statistical hypothesis test. So if my friend John is accused of a crime, in America, we always assume that John is innocent. That is our null hypothesis. We assume the null hypothesis is true as the prosecutor attempts to prove an alternative hypothesis that John is guilty. Now the catch is, John has to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That reasonable doubt threshold is our alpha. Alpha is that smallest probability where we still believe that John is innocent. The p-value is the probability he actually is innocent. And if that p-value gets too small, we say we've proven beyond a reasonable doubt that John is guilty. So we've got two possible conclusions. We either reject the null hypothesis and conclude that John is guilty, indicating the p-value, the probability was smaller than alpha, or that threshold. Or we could fail to reject the null hypothesis. But what's interesting here is that does not mean we accept the null hypothesis. In fact, 
In the judicial system, we never say someone is innocent. We just say they are not guilty. We haven't shown they're innocent. We've just shown that they're not guilty. That would be the case where there's too much evidence in favor of the no hypothesis, in favor of his innocence. Now, this example might be a little silly, but it kind of sets up the steps of it. But let's try a real hypothesis test. Let's say an old sheepdog has his resting heart rate checked six times. That's our sample size, so I'll mark that as n. And in those six times, his average heart rate is 105 beats per minute. Notice that average is of the sample, not the population. That's only those six heart rate checks. We're going to call that x bar because that's a sample. A normal heart rate for the old sheepdog is a normal distribution with sigma equal to 12. We have the population standard deviation and a mean of 115 beats per minute. Notice that mean is going to be mu because that's talking about the average of all sheepdogs normally have 115 beats per minute. The vet it wants to know, should the vet be concerned that the dog's heart rate is slowing? And it says to use a 5% level of significance. That means our alpha is 0 0.05. The smallest probability where we'll believe the no hypothesis is 5%. Any smaller than 5, we'll reject it. So let's see if we can identify what our null hypothesis is. The null hypothesis is that population mean. The mean of all dogs, of all sheep dogs, is 115 beats per minute. The alternative hypothesis, what we're trying to show, is that the dog's heart rate is slowing. Slowing means it's getting smaller. We want to show that mu is smaller than that 115. To get an idea, draw in a picture of what we're trying to show. Here's our normal distribution with a mean of 115 in the middle. We want to see if we're smaller or in that left tail. Well, it turns out this sheepdog is at 105. It is smaller. So how much area is in that left tail? What is the probability we're in the left tail? That's what we need to find. So our x values were 105 and 115. When we change those to z's, the mean z is always 0. But we have a formula to change our 105 into a z. And that was that x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation over the sample size. Or in our case, the sheepdog at 105 minus 115 divided by the standard deviation of 12 over the square root of the sample size, which is 6. When we put that in our calculator, we end up with negative 2.04, rounding to two decimal digits, 2.04. The probability that we're at 2.04 or worse, that's going to come off of our z table. But let's go to Excel. We're going to hit equals norm.s.distribution. The z value that we just calculated was negative 2.04. We want it cumulative. We find out the area in that tail is 0 0.0207. So the area in the tail is 0 0.0207. That is the p value. That is, based on our sample of these six heart rates, there is a 0 0.0207 probability that our null hypothesis is true, that the average is 115. Alpha is that smallest probability where we still believe the null hypothesis is true, and that's 0 0.05. We see that p-value is smaller than alpha. It is past our threshold. A small p-value means we are going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis that for this dog, his average resting heart rate is in fact less than 115 beats per minute. So to answer the question, should the vet be concerned that the heart rate is slowing? 
The answer is yes. The doctor should be concerned at the 5% level of significant that the doc dog's heart rate is slowing. Now with any statistical test like this, we used alpha at 5% to make our decision. That means we could be wrong 5% of the time. Actually, there's two different types of errors that could be calculated in a statistical test. The first is called a type 1 error, and that is when the null hypothesis is actually true, but we end up rejecting it anyways. It's sometimes called an alpha error because it's got a probability of alpha. This is exactly what might have happened in our situation. We rejected the null hypothesis, but we don't know if it's true or not because we didn't sample every single possible heart rate. We just took six heart rates. So there's a chance, 5% in our case, or alpha, that the null hypothesis is true, and we rejected it anyways. The opposite of this is a type 2 error. It's often called a beta error as well. That's when the null hypothesis is false, but we failed to reject it anyways. If we ended up with a bigger p-value, we might say, oh, failed to reject the null hypothesis. But maybe if we had taken a larger sample, we would have rejected it. That's a type 2 error when we should have rejected it, but we didn't. So hopefully this video helped you see how we can conduct a statistical test and the different parts of a statistical test.